Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to episode one of Adventures in Time, a short series where we're going to get to know this friend here, the Time Plus from Bastel. So this is a flexible stereo delay effects unit, which by way of some powerful controls, modulators that can be applied to each of these controls individually, presets and sequencing of those presets, you can do a whole range of really interesting looping and glitching and textural effects. And we're going to get to those sort of things later on in this series. But for today, we're going to start from an initialized patch and we're just going to make a really nice echo, a nice delay, because delay ultimately makes everything sound better. That's just the rules, I know they make the rules. In particular, the delay that we're going to build today is um, going to be one with some interesting gritty character, some movement to make sure that things don't sound too static within the delay. And also we're going to take a mono signal, and I mean mono from the perspective of the stereo image, and turn it into something that is more spread out and stereo without necessarily resorting to the classic sort of ping pong approach. So, let's get to know time. So I've got a basic initialized patch here. And if we bring up the mix control here, we can hear that delayed signal. And um, it's not in time, and that's going to do my head in. So let's get that in time first of all. So the easiest way to do this, uh, well, easiest way to do this maybe is by ear, but the most controlled way of doing this is to tap in the tempo here and turn on the sync control. And now you can hear that our delay is nicely in time. You can also do this using um, analog clock or MIDI, but I can't be bothered to plug in other things. And now the course control here, which is our main way, or one of our two main ways, I should say, of changing the delay time, is going to snap to subdivisions. So you have the course control here, which is now snapping to subdivisions when sync is turned on. The fine control still allows us to offset it a little bit if we want things to be not quite exactly locked in to the tap tempo, which is uh, really welcome. Cool. So um, the time essentially works on this paradigm of a sort of virtual digital tape loop. Uh, you have your input, which then gets written to the tape on the record head. The tape moves around until it gets to the playback head, and that's where you hear the delay. The further that playhead is away from the record head, that's going to lengthen the delay time, and that's what the coarse and fine knobs are doing. They're moving the relative position of those two heads. So, The head is further away now, so we're not hearing the delay happen as soon. Now what you're not hearing with this coarse control, or indeed the fine control, is a whole lot of pitch smearing, which you kind of expect to hear um, on uh, delay knobs for other effects, right? You turn the delay and you kind of often hear that sort of wobble and change in the pitch of what's going around in the delay. Now, the nice thing about time is that we have that as well. So this is changing the position of the heads. We also have a way to change the speed of this virtual tape. And as we turn this one down, you can hear some of that pitch wobble. But we're also changing that uh, delay time as well. And this isn't just 
changing the speed of the tape in terms of uh, doing pitch wobbles. This is also essentially stretching out the resolution of the tape so that we get darker sounds and as we push it even further kind of actually exactly in time kind of aliasing sounds as well and we can also do all those extreme pitch smooshes as well which is very cool a nice additional feature here incidentally is if you hold down shift and use the freeze and sync buttons it will half and double the tape speed so you can get exact octaves and exactly half delay times and they're quite performative because you can kind of get stuff into the delay buffer and then kind of move it around there are actually two modes up for the tape speed as well. If we hold down shift and give it a little wiggle, it puts it into the alternative mode. And this will reduce the amount of aliasing we get by introducing filters. So we're getting less of that sort of fuzzy aliasing, but we are also getting a sort of darker sound as we slow the tape down. I'm going to lean into the digital sounding though, I think. Because um, I kind of like that sort of digital grip. So let's go half time. And what was certainly pleasant was the sort of texture we were getting as we were moving this tape speed around by hand. That pitch wobble is a lovely thing. So let's get that pitch wobble into our sound. So to do this without having to constantly wobble the knob, we can introduce a robot to this knob. So pretty much every single knob on time plus, not the input knob, but the rest of them, I think, um, you can assign a robot to, which is basically an LFO. There are some other things it can do, which we'll look at in other videos. Um, but it's a separate LFO per knob. So to assign a robot, we can wobble uh, the knob while holding down the robot button. We can also choose whether the robot is going to work only negative, positive, or bipolar. And I think we're going to go bipolar for this one. And now these two controls, rate and amount, are going to affect the speed and uh, depth of the LFO on this knob. And as we turn up that amount there, we can start to hear that kind of pitch wobble. become even more interesting when we start to bring in a bit more feedback as well. As those repeats are sort of out of tune with each other, we start to get kind of a chorusing thing happening. Now, I probably don't want this to be a kind of a periodically sort of fading in and out sound. I want this to be a bit more random, and we can choose different shapes uh, down here. So I'm going to go to the uh, random shape here for this modulation. At the moment this is going to be stepped. But if we hold down robot and turn the rate knob, it changes the shape. And the different um, sort of basic shapes here have different things that happen when we turn up the shape control. And in the case of the uh, random one, it smooths it out. bit of movement and instability. Unstability? Instability in that sound now. Yeah. Nice bit of sort of lo-fi warble going on there. Can't get just on the cusp of being too much. Yeah, that's nice. We might also then try, maybe it's halving the speed there to get more of that grit in. Yeah. That's nice. Now, um, 
We can also, if we want to get things a bit darker, even still, we can introduce a filter to the feedback loop as well. be nice to go to the high pass side of this since the tape speed will be making things darker kind of get like a band pass thing to keep things out of the way i think probably darker is more the vibe let's find the very darkest we want to go Let's apply a robot to this control. So we can give it a little wobble. Uh, because we found the darkest point, we only want it to go positive, so we can select that here. So synchronize the robot um, by turning on the sync here, um, which will give us um, again time divisions for this sort of movement. But I think having it free moving is probably more the vibe here. So I mentioned I wanted to give this um, delay sound some more space. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to apply a robot to the fine control. So hold on, robot. Select fine here. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of amount to this. And that's basically just at the moment smoosh the delay time around again. So we're not hearing anything stereo here. So how do we make this stereo? Well, if we hold down robot and hit the sync button here, it puts the robot for this particular knob into stereo mode. And what this does, in essence, is uh, on the left-hand side, the robot acts as it did previously. On the right-hand side, it's going to invert. So in our case, as the delay time gets longer on the left, it's actually going to get shorter on the right and vice versa. And this creates quite a lovely stereo image.
that's lovely. Um, so we haven't touched these spacing and level knobs. Perhaps we should. Uh, so basically what uh, the level knob does is it introduces um, additional uh, additional um, playback heads. As we turn up the level here, we get more of them. So we get these shorter delays inside our main one. And the spacing here will change the relative spacing of those additional heads to get these sort of more complicated multi-tap things going on. You can also choose whether these are going to be synchronized or not by holding down shift and giving the spacing knob a bit of a wiggle. As always, 
a like on the video is very appreciated. And do make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming adventures in time. But other than that, 